Quidditch is easy enough to understand, even if it's not too easy to play. There are seven players on each side. Three of them are called chasers. This ball is called the quaffle, said Wood. The chasers throw the quaffle to each other and try to get it through one of the hoops to score a goal. Now, there's another player on each side who's called the keeper. I'm the keeper for Gryffindor. I have to fly around our hoops and stop the other team from scoring. I'm going to show you what the bludgers do, Wood said. These two are the bludgers. The bludgers rock it around, trying to knock players off their brooms. That's why you have two beaters on each team. It's their job to protect their side from the bludgers and try to knock them toward the other team. Now, the last member of the team is the seeker. You don't have to worry about the quaffle or the bludgers. Wood reached into the crate and pulled out the fourth and last ball. This, said Wood, is the golden snitch, and it's the most important ball of the lot. It's very hard to catch because it's so fast and difficult to see. It's the seeker's job to catch it. Whichever seeker catches the snitch wins his team an extra 150 points, so they nearly always win. That's why seekers get fouled so much. The game of Quidditch only ends when the snitch is caught. Well, that's it. Any questions? First attracted me to Quidditch was like the the Harry Potter aspect of it, but then it soon turned into just the love of the sport. It's kind of like a place where everybody like if you're like really big and physical, then it's like you could be a chaser, and if you're like you know more strategic thinking, then like your spots more on beater and stuff. So like there's a spot for everybody in Quidditch. I play for the uh, for Texas Quidditch. I'm a chaser. Um, I started out playing Quidditch because I was a Harry Potter fan. I thought it would be like a cool way to kind of live it out. But as I've um, kept playing, I've separated the two, and I love it for the sport aspect. I'm a really competitive person. I love playing team sports, and it's just the, it's the right sport for me. Initially, I was definitely attracted by uh, the fact that it's derived from the Harry Potter books. I'm a huge reader. Uh, I grew up reading the Harry Potter books with my family. Uh, it's a huge part of my life, but Whenever I actually got into the game and started playing it and started meeting the people, like I realized not only were the people amazing who played Quidditch, but it's a rough and tumble game. It started out as a Harry Potter thing. It is not that at all anymore. <laughs> I've almost completely disassociated it with Harry Potter, almost. Um, but it's all about, for me, the sport. So Quidditch was started in Middlebury, Vermont, um, at the College of Middlebury. The rules were a lot different. It was very much like the books. People had capes, which they don't now. Um, it, was a lot, it was a lot sillier. And they still played with brooms and bristles, which is highly impractical now that it's like turned into this like super intense, fast-paced, like full contact sport. Austin, Texas is kind of known for its weirdness and being a little bit out there, and so um, I think that's a big reason why Quidditch is so big at the University of Texas. I think we take our weirdness to the next level because we play a sport where we run around with sticks between our legs. The drastic rule changes that have happened in the sport have definitely taken out a lot of the whimsy, which I'm a fan of, <laughs> um, and made it more of a legitimate sport, but also it's made it safer. It's just a big sign that you know, people are taking this seriously. People want this to be better than it is. Really, if you could mark an event as being the transfer over was the Quidditch World Cup number five. Um, and before that, I think they just like, they just saw Quidditch as a silly way of like hanging out with people who love Harry Potter. Um, and then as, as the sport progressed and a lot more schools got a hold of it, it became more competitive because um, people really like the athletic part of it and being able to play a sport in college competitively at an international level. A big part of us wanting to win World Cup 6 was that we wanted people at UT to notice us, to see that, look what we're doing, we want a World Cup. This is a world championship. How many people at UT can say they want a world championship? Being a club sport has really helped me take it even more seriously than I already was. When I first joined, I thought this was going to be dead by my senior year. Um, and now I'm the captain of a team that had over 200 people at tryouts. And so I am confident that this is something that's going to grow. The first World Cup I heard, only like two teams that competed. And um, this April, it's going to be World Cup 7. And I think it's going to be 80 teams that will compete. So it's expanded so much 
in like seven years. This is not slowing down. Uh, more and more teams keep joining. It's, it's on every continent except for Antarctica. Um, yeah, this is not something that I think is gonna stop anytime soon. Uh, at least not <laughs> while I'm uh, around to say something about it.